But the cuts to dentistry have been deeper than in the rest of the NHS, with spending a quarter less than it was in 2010. And I'm not surprised he makes no mention of that. Now, last Wednesday, I met with our local dental committee to discuss the uh, problem. Dentists who are committed to their profession and to NHS provision. People who want a solution. And following our discussion, they commissioned a, waiting, a, a survey of waiting lists across the city. 37 practices responded, about half of the city's providers. Only one practice could offer a waiting time shorter than a year. For 29%, it was up to two years. 32% more than two years. The most significant number, 35% of practices, were unable to add any patients to their waiting lists. But there is provision. I see the Minister shaking her head. There is provision for those who can pay. Healthwatch reported last year that whilst, quote, while some people were asked to wait an unreasonable time of up to three years for an NHS appointment, those able to afford private care could get an appointment within a week adding to health inequalities, and not because dentists are reluctant to take on NHS patients, but because the system discourages them from doing so. We have reached a tipping point for NHS dentistry. Unless the government acts, the complaints that we are all getting as members of parliament will only grow. There is an answer though, that's the good news. There's an answer, but it's in the hands of the government. We need to restore adequate levels of funding for dentistry in England and we need a commitment to fulfil the long-promised contract reform and real contract reform, not, uh, not tweaking it at the edges, but real contract reform. Or we face, Madam Deputy Speaker, the slow death of NHS dentistry. 